and now we move forward for the next presentation of the day which is going to be by Dr. Anirudh Gautam. He is a mechanical and electrical engineer from prestigious SCRA scheme of Indian Railways. He has served initial years on the Indian Railways in the maintenance or uh, in the carriage and wagon, maintenance and operation of steam locomotives, operations and maintenance of diesel locomotives and train and crew management in the challenging Eastern Railways of Indian Railways. He has developed the world's first ALCO locomotive electronic uh, fuel injection system and mobile emission test car. Dr. Gautam is recipient of uh, various awards by the Ministry of Railways, including the coveted National Award for Outstanding Service by the Minister of Railways. He holds a Master in Quality Management from Bits Pilani and Masters of uh, Engineering in, in, in Engine Systems from University of uh, Wisconsin Medicine, USA, and a PhD in Mechanical Engineering from IIT Kanpur. He is an adjunct uh, professor at IIT Kanpur in Electrical Engineering Department. He is truly a person with passion and dedication. I am talking about Dr. Anirudh Gautam, IRSME 1986 batch, SCA 83 batch. He is having the designation as Principal Executive Director, Resource and Testing Vertical, Research Designs and Standard Organization, Lucknow. Can we have you here, sir, on the stage with a round of applause? So. To all of you. So, um, uh, the topic uh, uh, on which uh, me and my colleague Nipun Pandey will be speaking is a standardization of metro rail system and why it is required, why it is important and what it means for the Indian industry. So before that I'll just give a few slides on the RDSO. Uh, RDSO is the sole uh, research and design organization for Indian Railways and uh, we are also doing safety certification of the metros. So our mandate is uh, introduction of new designs, new technologies, upgrade the designs, maintenance standards, setting up, quality control, and testing and statutory clearance for induction of any rolling stock, new rolling stock. So any, ro any new rolling stock which, which, uh, which is introduced on the railways or on metro uh, has, to be, uh, has to be cleared by RDSO. So we, we are carrying out the safety certification and clearance for operations to metros, which includes service engineering, technical investigations, guidance, inspection, and approval of critical items, training. And also we assist railways in interaction with bodies such as UIC. Uh, our Director General, Mr. Uh, Bhutani, Sanjeev Bhutani, is currently the chairman of International Union of Railways from India. Uh, which is a which is a big honor uh, for India and the industry, Indian railways, Indian industry, who are engaged in the railway business. And uh, this is the Metro Act. There's a Metro Act which says that Ministry of Railways, they have been assigned the responsibility of technical planning and safety of rail-based urban transportation systems as per the location of business rules. And so there is an act now. Uh, so we are doing this work under that Metro Act. And uh, again, a little bit more about RDSO. RDSO is a sole research organization, so we have got many types of labs, signal lab, air brake lab, geotechnical lab, track machine lab, fatigue lab, etc. traction installation lab. So the bottom line is that there is a domain expertise available in our own country, in India, in the form of RDSO which is available for all of you to be used. It's a, it's a government uh, facility and uh, you are most welcome to you know, come and discuss any things, uh, any help you want or any items you want to develop or anything, most welcome. So this is about the we are ISO certificate, so I'll go fast on this. So RDSO is a single window clearance for metro railways in India. So uh, we do the civil engineering, electrical engineering, rolling stock. All the clearances are done under single window. 
to facilitate the state governments and metros so they don't have to run from pillar to post getting these approvals. And we have now made a, a, a portal also for them to facilitate that. And now we are moving to artificial intelligence based some systems which will be you know even faster and more uh, you know friendly towards the metros and the state governments. So this is the online portal which we developed in house. And uh, now this is the scope of the metro manual. There's a metro manual which has been developed. We have to provide guidance to the upcoming metros. Then we have to stipulate the procedure and various steps to be taken because safety is a very important issue and railways, Indian railways is known for its safety. Uh, our uh, safety, uh, our safety uh, records have been uh, uh, of the of the in the last 10 years have been impeccable. So, and we also uh, do the document reviews, design test reports. We do the oscillation trials for metros on on their lines, and uh, then we decide what are the criteria for passing the rolling stock and timelines for various certification activities. So we have done complete standardization of the standardization of the documents for the metros so that they don't have to struggle. So these formats are there, they have to submit through the portal and then we examine it. And usually one metro, the amount of documents you can imagine, we get 12 to 13,000 pages of different documents for safety certification. So you can imagine the kind of and my colleague Nippon and the other people, civil, mechanical, signals, they all have to go through and so we are trying to go for some kind of artificial intelligence even there. So these are the various formats and these uh, up to uh, 17 metros have been, are running in India today as of now. Uh, these are the various metros that we have certified and they are running. A long list, 17 are there. And uh, we have a record of doing it in the fastest possible time uh, without sacrificing any quality or safety. So because we have the expertise, we are the domain expert, Every, everybody is there. Track, bridge, electrical, overhead, loco, everybody is there. So now what we have done is let's come to the standardization. And uh, why is this standardization important for the country? So every, every country has its own standard. We also have a standards, BIS standards. Why is it important? It is important because if you have your own standards, it helps your own industry, the Indian industry. We want to help our Indian industry to design and manufacture all the items of Metro in India by our Indian industry. For that, the first step is we have to have a standard for different, different, different things. And if it is Indian standard, then easier for our industry to meet because then we do the certification and otherwise they have to go to France, Spain, Japan, China, wherever. And it is a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of effort. So that is why standardization is very, very important and we are uh, RD also has been declared as a, one of the organizations for standards, for developing standards, and we are developing standards for metros also. So other thing is that if you have a standard, then you have the economy of scale because any part required, let us say, by Bombay Metro can be used in Pune Metro or in Kochi Metro or in Lucknow Metro. Right now, that is not the case. The 17 metros that have been built are totally 100% imported designs. They are not indigenous designs at all. They are all imported designs and every metro is different. Which means that the part used in one metro cannot be used in the other metro. And so we don't get the economy of scale and my industry does not get benefited because my industry requires an economy of scale so that they can invest in the in, in the setting up the you know manufacturing facility, designing, manufacturing, and all that. So, standardization is very very important, and uh, because we are having so now we have to sit back and relax. We are in we are in uh, we are in contact with the Ministry of 
housing and urban affairs and we have told them and they have also set up they are also very keen and very very concerned about this that we must have our own standard and we must do a very strong indigenization program wherein from design to complete operation manufacturing operation everything is done in india by our indian industry okay so that's the plan what happened So I told you about the 18 uh, cities and uh, so we have got now enough experience to carry out the standardization and Indianization. We have got enough experience. We have got all types of metros, overhead, third line, third rail, this, that, all the standard gauge of course, except for DMRC and Kolkata which also has broad gauge because initially they were built in broad gauge. So we have got all types of experience, all type of tunnel, all types of uh, overhead equipment, all types of stations, rolling stock, signals. Signals is, is uh, basically uh, communication based train control, but there is no connectivity between, let's say, one supplier A and supplier B. So uh, equipment of supplier A cannot be used in supplier B, it, which is a big, big loss. So that's why this standardization. So we have ha we have already started the, I told you the formats we have standardized, procedures we have standardized. So we have standardized the functionality part of it. But the designs are not standardized. So we have started with the tunnels, cut and cover and the that, uh, uh, boring type of a tunnel. So we have started with the standard for that, so that uh, you know the India industry can then start investing in uh, maybe tunnel machines because right now all the tunneling machines are coming from China. So and lot of uh, metros are going to be built, 35 as per my knowledge today are already planned, 18 are running. So it is a high time that our tunneling, we have our own tunneling uh, manufacturer, tunnel machine manufacturer, designers manufacturers. So we started with the tunnels and the bridges. And of course, it has to be accepted by the ministry, because the ministry is different. The ministry is Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. So we are coordinating with them, and they are also very, very keen and very concerned that it should be done at the earliest. And you know, this is the timeline for the standardization, just to, just to you know, uh, kind of tell you. So first meeting was started, uh, for, was held on uh, in, uh, in September 2015 with manufacturers and various metros at Chennai. Second meeting again held in October 2015. Third meeting in uh, May 2016. And again meeting in June 2016. So we had a number of meetings. And draft specifications for the rolling stock were uh, sent to Ministry of Railways. And uh, we, have forward, we have concurred it. Ministry of Railways has concurred it. The ministry where I work. And we have issued some standards and hosted on website. And also there was a presentation before Niti Aayog in, the two th in December 2018. But after that, it is standstill. So, so further progress is not there. So let me be clear. So we have to now, we are again starting this, pro this process. There were some issues. And uh, between industry, government, the foreign uh, you know, suppliers, because the foreign suppliers, they would definitely like to protect their IP. They cannot, you know, just tell you, give you their IP. They, they may give you the manufacturing. They can tell you the how. The foreign manufacturers, the suppliers, the OEMs, they say, we will tell you the know-how, but we will not tell you the know-why. Because that is our intellectual property. And that is where the Indian industry should come in now very strongly. Tying up with academic institutes, tying up with the foreign suppliers, we don't have any problem there. To understand the know why, know how is okay, know how is manufacturing, that's all right. But that is a lower end job. The actual job is knowing the know why. For that, everybody has to make very, very, uh, very, you know, efforts and hard work, hard efforts. So these are the uh, uh, some some of the standardization is MOUD now MOHUA. Uh, we, they have uh, established a standardization of broad parameters of rolling stock for metro railways. 
then a standardization of broad parameters, signaling systems, electrical, and for civil engineering structures. That is in 2017-18. So these guidelines are being followed by the metros, but this is not the end of it. There are much more to be done. And uh, so, for example, the track system, maximum height and width of rolling stock may be fixed. That we have to do. So we are now going for the SOD standardization, schedule of dimension standardization, diameter of tunnel. Also we are going, we are going to, I told you, we are working on it, cut and cover we have fixed, and this, uh, huh? Freeze okay? Oh ho. Ab ho gai kya? I'm sorry, uh, kitni dher se ho gai, please? Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. So, did, did you look at this slide or not? Because I was not looking back. Could you, could you, could you, could you look at this slide or not? Okay, so I go to the next one. So, so for example, the X track and structures. So all these standardization has to be done if the country is to really benefit from all this, this movement of metros. Thus, the, the citizens are, are of course, are benefiting from it because they are able to travel, but we want to reduce the cost and make it sustainable at low cost, because sustainability means that we should be able to manufacture and operate at lower cost, which is which fits the pocket of my, my passenger. So there this standardization and indigenization are the most important thing and most important for my industry also. But a word of caution here, because in 1901, let me just tell you the history. There were a lot of railways, 1901, I am going to the 19th, 1901. There were a lot of railways in India at that time with different standards. Many standards were there. This state, that state, monorail, meter gauge, narrow gauge, non-standard gauge, this gauge, that gauge, broad gauge. So to 1901, the British government at that time, they set up the Indian Railway, IRCA. Okay, the purpose of IRC was to start the Indianization process. This was established in Shimla because they realized that if there are going to be so many variety of things, then the economy of scale and benefit will not come to the industry and also to the public because the cost will be high. And that's exactly what is happening in India today. We have started with something, we have 18 metros, but now is the time. So similarly, what happened for railways in 1901 has to be done now for metro, since we have sufficient experience. Similarly, for the fastening systems we are proposing, car body, train performance parameters we have already standardized. So this I told you, performance functions we have standardized, but not the design. So fire protection, uh, this, is, um, this is to be, uh, this is more or less as, as accepted by the metros. And uh, we have to, we have this, this we, have, we are trying to do the, for these items like uh, front evacuation system. Still some metros have side evacuation system. Some metros have front evacuation system in the case of fire or some accident. And it is recommended to have only the front evacuation system. But some metros are using the side evacuation system also. So if there is only one system, one country, one standard, one system. As our Honorable Prime Minister says, one country, one standard. So metro also the same thing. Because only then our industry gets the benefit of economy of scale. So there are certain things we are taking up. The collision standard, CBTC working and all that. I told you, CBTC of Alstom, CBTC of Bombardier, CBTC of Hitachi, they cannot talk to each other. So that's the thing. And... Uh, there are many issues, so uh, I will now request uh, Nipun Pandey, my colleague, to just say about that. Uh, so, as that already mentioned, why standardization is important. Uh, so, uh, these are some of the things that we have highlighted. Uh, if we had standardized these, then we would have saved at least maybe two to three months that is uh, presently happening uh, in this metro certification. So, like for example, uh, the HDC 
the contact wire that we have. So uh, in this, there are eight type tests that we have to do. We have a RDSO specification on it, but all the metro suppliers, they don't follow this. They follow their EN, which does not have this very important ultrasonic testing, which will detect the internal flaws in the contact wire. So there are issues like this. I think if RDSO has already framed some standards, then it is better that we follow that. They are as per the Indian conditions rather than following some EN. Uh, same with the messenger wire and similarly with the jumpers. So we have uh, specifications existing. So I think it will be better if uh, everybody follows these. Uh, then we have a modular type cantilever where there is a heat cyclic test, but these are not submitted by metros generally. Uh, same with the droppers, then the ATDs. Uh, there are number of tests mentioned in the RDSO spec, but uh, metros test as per EN in which only two type tests are there. So we often have to send query back to Metro and it takes a lot of time. So I think we will save much of valuable time if we follow the standards. Same with the transformers. And now coming to the traction power and train simulation softwares. So we see that most of these softwares are like they are uh, belonging to companies abroad. Uh, this is not yet indigenized. Uh, similarly, the mechanical loading calculations, this is not standardized. So all these things should be standardized. Choice of the traction system, like in uh, uh, some earlier presentation I saw, they were mentioning that we don't even consider the PHP DT while designing the metros. But uh, the MOHUA report says that we should be considering this to decide the voltage level. So I think this parameter needs to be sent to us also if, if metros are taking it because this is not communicated to us. So, uh, so this, uh, like, uh, these are the items that are majorly imported. Like, uh, in the just the previous presentation, we saw that they are building a factory in India for this uh, 750 DC system. So similarly, we need to indigenize this. A reversible substation, this, uh, M, uh, this ministry talks about a reversible substation. So I don't think anybody, I, uh, I mean, the metro should be looking into this aspect also. Like if we have a DC system, then how do we send the, how do we utilize the regenerative braking energy? If, if we have a reversible substation, the energy can go back to the grid. Otherwise, it will be wasted in the registers. So all these things are already there in the report. I think if metros comply with this, then I think a lot of uh, our problems will be solved. Similarly, we have some tests like the climatic chamber tests, which are performed only outside India. So I think if we develop facilities for that in India, it will be very helpful. That's we it. We are trying to uh, develop these facilities. Okay, so we are trying to develop these uh, facilities in in RDSO. All the metro-related facilities, because the metro uh, have approached us and they said, why can't you set up this in, in RDSO Lucknow? We are doing that. With that, the cost of the testing will come down and the ultimately the burden on the passenger, you know, the last person in that food chain will be the least. So we are developing all these facilities in RDSO and uh, with ben metros will benefit from it. So uh, that's it. Okay. So thanks a lot. And uh, I think I'll give the... Thank you so much. Can we all give a round of applause to both the gentlemen? Shall we please invite uh, Mr. Ankush Bhandari here on the stage to felicitate the speaker, to felicitate Dr. Anirudh Gautam. Sir, please stay back. Can we have Mr. Ankush Bhandari on the stage, please? Uh, what is his name? Nipun Pandey. Nipun. We also have Mr. Nipun Pandey. Can we have you here on the stage, please? Such a wonderful presentation, a lot of information, knowledge presented by both the gentlemen, Dr. Anirudh Gautam and Nipun Pandey. 